Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and welcome back to the Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Last time we left off, we killed the Ogre Bounty for Deseral, and we are now going to turn it in. And I have a feeling she's going to backstab us, but let's find out. Wait, hold on. I want to assemble the map first. This stitched together approximation of a map points the way to a remote island. Illustrations of squat huts and the name Junvik Village stand out with prominence. The northern coast, however, is adorned with the scribbled likeness of a skull. Spidery lettering encircles the landmass to spell out the name Drowned Barrows. Merely holding the parchment fills you with a sense of dread. When you run your thumb over the skull, your pulse quickens like the beating of a drum. Alright, let's do it, Desaral. I welcome your return. Hmm? I killed Torkar. I'd say it's a shame to have lost such a brilliant mind, but Torkar didn't give you any choice. 5,000 copper, 8,100 experience. She might just give you more each time she you turn one in. It might not actually be in order like that. You've put to bed the last of the Firebrand's crew, my friend, which was more than I ever could have hoped for. Thank you truly. I can rest easy now, knowing they got what they deserved. Huh. So she really doesn't want the map. I am genuinely surprised. Did we go in here? The treasure tre Yes, we did. Alright, now we are going to go talk to Ferrante. Oh, come on. There we go. And he is at the Balefire Beacon. <clears throat> All right, who are we going to talk to? Oh yeah, Ferrante. I'm an idiot. I just said it and then I forgot. Two-eyed Pim. Let's talk to him first. You have my ear. Nope. Castol warned me you would come, but he did not indicate how much he'd have briefed you in advance. The captain straightens the furled cuffs of his sleeves, ready to get down to business. Castell thought you could use the help. You can assure Castell that I would have handled it in due time. I've simply been tied up with other matters. A frown tugs at the corners of his mouth, and he strokes a thumb thoughtfully along the curved grip of his flintlock. However... And then he smiles, sharply and without any warmth. If you were to handle this small matter for the both of us, I would see to your reward. Personally. Drop... Drop the excuses and give me the details. As you prefer. He tugs curtly on the cuffs of his sleeves. You're to go to Crooksburg and speak with a master Kua. He runs the island. Seraphin's mouth falls slightly open. Vertigo tickles the, the, the vertigo tickles the edge of your thoughts as if you were peering over the edge of the world. Flogging fuck. Seraphin growls, his nostrils flaring above a curled lip and crooked teeth. An ice cold sliver of loathing and betrayal slides between your ribs and into the space between your lungs. Seraphin turns away and the feeling fades. Hand me your map. And I'll mark Crooksburg's location. I trust that Castall has already pressed upon you the need for discretion regarding this matter. Don't... He snatches the map from your hands. Answer that. After scrawling a black X, he hands the map back and turns away without another word. Alright, let's talk to Ferrante again, just to make sure. Such a solace it is to see you again. Uh, this was this sword was Ravon's. She was charged with protecting it. Yet, by some means, you have acquired it. How remarkable! Ah, I know these symbols. As Ferrante examines the sword, he sucks in a sharp breath. This is the Burning Palace. See, the symbol represents the Dokotsi family, which means you are in possession of the royal sword of Gran Vailia, the Engoliero do Espirs. Ah. His face flushes with ex with excitement, and he endeavors to unsheathe the sword, arms trembling from the effort. At last, a stab of dismay cuts across his face. Merle, but it appears <clears throat> to be sealed tight. Perhaps we might use this to bargain with Rivan, should we ever chance a meeting with her. Almost reluctantly, he hands it back to you. Come, let us share a fine conversation. I've obtained information on Rivan from Isir's tomb. He rubs his hands together, expectant, and his dark eyes glimmer. Well, share and share, as is the lord of the coast. I've actually spoken with Isir. His brow hoist high, his brows hoist high up on his forehead. Meaning what? But at last, you were able to read his soul? 
despite how much time has passed? Isir had become a death guard. We exchanged words. A death guard? How fascinating. And terrible. I must, of course, presume that you've unearthed a promising lead for her. Perhaps you were able to learn of our Rivan's whereabouts, of where her spectral ship oft anchors. I'll tell you about the survivor, the loyalist of Eldis, must go free. Ferrante pinches the bridge of his nose. Selenia is not a captive. The matter is not whether she will go free, but when. If you insist, it must be sooner than so be it. If she's not a pr prisoner, what's with the animosity between you two? She is uncouth and would happily repay my benevolence with a knife in the back. Yet you fought my precaution. Nod. Isir tracked Ravan after she had become a death guard. They fought near the Isle of Dusk. The captain strokes his chin, his gaze contemplative. I can summon to mind no island with such name. Likely it hides now behind another. I will charge my best chroniclers to track our isle through the centuries. I believe you are becoming an invaluable asset to the Principi, and I deeply value each of my assets. You must accept this token of my immense appreciation. Nice, 13,000 experience, almost 14,000. We're going to be leveling up here soon already. Immune to push and pull effects. Um, that could be good, I guess. Grants hold fast, grants concentration at co on combat start. I might give that to either Shodi or... Uh, Ear to the sea, Amico. I will contact you when I have made a significant gain into the investigation of our mysterious floating hangman. Let's talk to him again. Ador, and how is the sea treating you? I am. What weighs on your mind in this moment, Casita? Come, let us share. I, I'm curious to know you better, Amico. Do you know how I have lived so long in this life of piracy? Uh, advice. Good. I would like to take note of this. Um, I do not. He nods. Conspiratorially, he leans close. You may already be aware, but I am a Dokotsi paladin, the first chair on the Consuelo, and my crews have been known to call me the last Marchesso. Contrary to popular belief, I do not overly favor speaking of myself. Really? He's a Darkozy paladin, huh? First chair on the Consuelo. Valian for council? So he's the first chair yes. on the Darkozy paladin council, I think. Not necessarily the Principi Consuelo, I think. So is he playing both sides or something? Or he, he's a high member in both groups? I don't know. Where is that girl? Nah, I don't need either of those. Alright, let's get out of here. Actually, you know what? Let's check around here first for that girl. Because she might join my crew or... Uh, you know what I need to do is... Do I need to go back to Aldis yet? Aldis? I don't know. You have my... Alright, we're getting out of here. You to the streets of Dunnage and Lifter's Refuge. I think we are done here. But let's check my my journal just to be sure assist captain ferrante yeah we need to go to crookspur difficulty the quest is at or below your character's current level recommended companion <laughs> pelagina i didn't know that i learned that Aethys has been sailed to hasango no difficulty the quest is one level higher than your character's current level it may prove a bit challenging harbinger's watch Huh. You know what? We'll get one more level and then we will go there. That, I believe, is the one of the DLCs. Travel to the Ruins? No. O'Hara, return to Barati. Serpent's Crown and Nekataka. We don't need to do that right now. Kill Chornu. Where is Chornu? North of Nekataka, so no, we're not going to do that. Slave Report and Crookspur. So Crookspur might be where we're going. Because it's not the main place, but it's like a like a side quest hub. Like if we have a, at least two side big side quests there that aren't just bounties. Of Like Minds, skipping ahead, no. Southwest of Port Mage. You know what? We might do that. We'll kill a Scylla the Wave Skipper next. How do I... 
I wish I could like track it. West of Nekataka, so we need to do that as well. It should be a little bit to the east of here. Sayuka, we don't want to go there yet. And we don't want to go there yet. Okay. Bounty Tahe, south of Nekataka, and Cookspur Island. Okay. So what we're going to do is just get on our ship, and we're going to go a little bit east and look for uh, your party that person. And then we will go south to southwest, <clears throat> southwest uh, Port Maje. So we go right and then straight down, and we should find where we're going. <clears throat> you, oh god dang it. You received an important missive from Captain Aldis Reed. Hello, lovesome. I hear you've got a deal. Another one, really? Going on with Ferrante to muck around in the mess that is Kirkspur Island. Before you go sailing into that, in to do that croc, oh my god, cock rots bidding, come and have a chat with me, will you? I've got a proposition for you I think you'll find wickedly enticing. I'll reserve a berth for a gal for galleon at Fort Deadlight's docks. Fort Deadlight. Okay. Galleon, because I never renamed it. Okay. Your most ruthless but truthful friend, or damn my blood, Aldis. Bring me, bring some more candied nuts. You know how I like them. Okay. Let's uh rename our galleon. Um. The Penetrator. Because I like Dark Souls. <laughs> Rafik the Redbeard. I really don't know where we're supposed to go though. Because we've already east of. I don't want to go too far up. Oh, there's Widla. Okay. So she's pretty far up there. I guess it is due east of Nikataka. Who are you? Rafik the Redbeard. Nope, we don't want to fight you. We will kill all the pirates eventually, just not now. Baina. You know what? It's only one skull. Let's take her out. <clears throat> How do we do this? Might as well just send a dare up. There's Baina, there's Priest, Priest, Cypher. Pa the Paladins are going to be annoying if they get past the dare. So that they're the ones we need to make sure he gets. Everyone else... You know what? Should we? No, I want to take out the Priests. So, the bear is going to form a line with Seraphin shortly behind. We're going to Phantom Foes everyone. I am going to... Take out the gold pack priests, I think. And then with her, we're going to have her do pillar. No, that's what we want to do. This is a perfect place to do her awesome AoE, which apparently has no grace area. So it, where, it casts wherever it is. What is this? Wondrous Torment. No. Let's go expose vulnerabilities. Uh, there we go. He's going to die from the dot damage. So I will uh, look at that. Mm. I'm loving that thing. Shoti, you are a... Like, I didn't expect you to be such a decent uh, spell damage dealer. And chill fog. Boom. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I guess she is a pure class priest, so her spells got to do decently. But come on, man. That was just crazy. Nomad's Brigandine. Brigandine. Battle Roamer grants lone guard. Chance 20% of hits converted to grazes if there are no allies nearby. And with the horde grants five bonus deflection while near allies. So he can do either one. And then minus 25% damage taken from disengagement attacks. It's actually might be... That's a plus three constitution. We want to keep that. 
that might be now it won't be good for seraphin but it might be good for oh my god adair get it through your head what do we got here it's one more one more armor yep that's better and i hate the way this one looks so there we go much better look at that he looks like a freaking knight or a jouster uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. we could go legendary cost 30,000 though feigned retreat 25% percent chance to reflect against disengagement attacks immunity to, to disengagement attacks and plus five deflection against ranged weapons you know head of the column plus five deflection against melee weapons that's what we're doing because the other three aren't really tail of the column it's not really what we want uh, ranged weapons are going to be targeting our other guys for the most part. Immunity dis to disengagement, we're real, we don't really care about that. And same with this one. 25% chance to deflect. Because enemies have a lot of hit points and they don't really do all that much damage. So what what's the point of deflecting an attack that barely does any damage? Like maybe if you were solo, but then, I mean... You'd have to be pretty damn tanky to be taking all those hits yourself and expecting any return on them. Did I see with a shark? For some reason I remember that name, but I don't think it's one of our bounties. Let's check out this abandoned village. 12 palm stones. Nature's embrace. 10% chance to grant the wearer and nearby allies wood skin whenever the when the wearer is critically hit. That's actually pretty good because it's nearby allies as well. Plus two burn armor rating, plus three freeze armor rating. Not bad. Why are you walking so slow? Is that how slow we always are? On uh, land? There's Hasango. Huh. Didn't notice we were that close to it. Here is Widla. Let's save it. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, but I doubt it. A long, sleek ship rides low in the water. Its crew stands protectively around a cluster of crates positioned on the main deck. A woman saunters across the deck, her roughly chopped hair swinging with her stride. We said or not, Perrin. She bangs her fist against one of the crates. The dwarven man stands near her flint... The dwarven man standing near her flinches as though she'd hit him. I'd happily tell you if you stopped interrupting my count. He rolls his eyes skyward. She cackles and thumps him on the back. He staggers forward and shoots her a venomous glare. You've had days to count. Now it's time we talked about the price. She turns her attention to you, eyes gleaming. Perrin follows her gaze. His eyes go wide. He clears his throat. <clears throat> Careful. This one's got friends in the Consuelo. We could cheat her out of some of the money, but it's only a thousand gold, so I'm in not going case, to. In that case, I'll honor the original price. Consider that a discount among friends. Give a thousand copper. Deal. Glad we could do business. Should have killed him. No. No, uh, witnesses. The smugglers unload the crates onto your ships. Your new cargo secured, you retract the anchor and let out your sails. Is that really storyboard worthy? I mean, really? We should have taken the dwarf with us. Ah, oh, damn it, I'm gonna sneeze. Alright, we're going to Port Mage, but let's go through this fog of war here. Hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. As your crew haul the smugglers' crates below deck, one of them shouts an alarm. There was a person in there, wasn't there? Shield Sister Dahlia finds you in your cabin. Captain, come quick. Someone's just popped out of one of those crates we picked up. Before you can object, Shield Sister Dahlia leads you above deck. A plump, middle-aged woman stands beside the crate. Stands beside the crates. Her clothing is rumpled and her hair matted, but her eyes twinkle with triumph. Gilarde, 23 days. This is a new record. She smells of stale urine, old sweat, and worse, but she beams at you all the same. 
Congratulations, I'm sure that's really great. It is more than great. It is the successful test of my newest spell, Renove Miseris. She speaks the name as proudly as if it belonged to her firstborn. What? Renewal of air, you would say. Kith have explored every mountain in the Eastern Reach, yet the realm of fish and leviathans remains close to us. It has been my dream to open these steps to discovery, to let Kith breathe as the fishes do. A look of wonder shines in her eyes. Or at least to let us use the air of a single breath again and again. Why go to Sayuka? Why leave the Dalian Republics? I didn't... How do we know she's from Sayuka? I still don't understand why you had to hide in a crate. Neither do I. But Okaya, she thinks maybe the Dukes will not be so happy to let me go, she shrugs. At least it gave me plenty of time to test my work. Why go to Sayuga? Why leave the Bellion Republic? Back home, they care only for profit, and there is little profit to be had in sticking your head in the glass bucket to watch the fish. But the Rawatayans, they have vision. They chase greater things than gold. So I go to work with them. Intellect. I do not have 13 intellect. What exactly are you to be working on at Sayuka? Sintere, but I had promised not to say. All right, that's all, yes, I suppose. I have much to do. Many more tests to run before we reach Sayuka. A pleasure talking, Captain. Okay. I mean, really, I didn't learn anything. Was she the person we were supposed to pick up? Or was she a stowaway? All right. Let's get this fog of war out of here. Type black sheep wall. Our crew's a little bit happier. The Osa Channel. And a burial site. Let's go here. He will check out the burial site first. A tomb rises from the earth before you. It's stone exterior, blah, 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 blah. This is just another searchable place. Sigil of Atrophy Ward Stone. Scroll of Prayer for the Body. And that's it, so nothing. This is probably somewhere we could have hit earlier on in the game. As you travel northwest, you discover a broad channel separating you from the flat expanse of a sandly, sandy islet. Illet, islet. Uh, a wooden bridge spans the waterway, easily wide, wide enough to accommodate a cart or horse. Crowds, a crowd throngs across the bridge. Oh my god. A crowd throngs the bridge, an eclectic menagerie of clean-coated valians, amwa in bright and colorful robes, and even the odd orlin. Down the hill, by the water's edge, a small cluster of amwa have gathered. Uh, walk on to the bridge. The bridge seems relatively new, little worn for something on the coast. The flat, the flat slats are utterly without ostentation, the structure crafted solely for functionality. The quiet murmur of conversation rises as you approach, entirely overwhelming the susuras of the sea. An orlin, his deep brown fur a close match to the boards beneath your feet, approaches you and doffs a wide-brimmed hat as he bows. Greetings, stranger. Come to I... The race? These people came out here to watch a race? The Orlin grins. Ain't from around here, are you? His raid Saren accent suggests that he isn't either. It's a local tradition, a swim race up the Osa Channel after a big storm when the current's at its strongest. Winner gets uh, some kind of guga or some such. Bragging rights, too. He smiles, rubbing his fingers together as if to indicate coin, but for us foreign non-swimming types, there's a bit of action in the betting. Um, people put money on this race? thought you looked at the type to want in on the action it's 10 shells to bet though that's roughly 50 pans and and you bet I'll be oh my god and you bet I'll happily take that in copper or silver he winks odds are three to one on that big bald woman the wiry blonde pays out five to one if you bet on the ropey kid and you win you net 10 times what you put in uh, I'll be back later can I participate in the race not really sure. Can't say it's up to me either way. You'd want to talk to them down on the riverside. Approach the Amwa near the water. From the shore, you see that the channel's, the channel's current seems significantly stronger than it had from afar, perhaps fed by the recent storms. The Huana gathered here, garbed in thin robes and little else, watch as you approach. One steps forward, her own gown in far brighter colors than those around her. She grins, her sharp triangular teeth peeking from between her lips. An Amwa, but no dead fire native. Then come to rediscover your culture? Examine the competitors with me. The largest of them, a bald woman, is all muscle. She'd be menacing in a fight, but in water, the bulk might slow her down, yeah. 
muscles suck at swimming. One of them, a man with tightly curled blonde hair, combines lean muscle with a compact frame. As he stretches, he watches the water as if it were an old friend. You doubt that the third gangly t a gangly teen should even be here. A light wind might carry him away. Ability, strengthen the gangly teen with a spell. No. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to join the race. She bows her head slightly. Then Akira cousin, we welcome you to do so. I'm ready to race. She nods and motions you toward the channel. Then go join the others at the water's edge. Leave your clothes upon the rocks and they will warm you after. I think I'll keep my clothes on for speed. <laughs> Uh, go to the water and strip down. I really wanted Adair to do this, but whatever. My watcher, you sure are. I mean, what I... Well, uh, that's... That's, a uh, good luck. Red face. Shodi clears her throat behind her fist, but she doesn't speak or st her stare. She doesn't break her stare. Well, I mean, we've already done it, so... You spring off the stone and crash into the cool, crisp salt water with the other swimmers. As hard as you kick and pull, the current pushes you back with the strength of a bear. You keep pace with Huana, the Huana, though your muscles burn with the effort. Partial success. One of the Hawana, you notice, struggles to remain in the pack. No, he's struggling just to stay above water. His desperate gasps carry down the channel. Help him to shore. Yeah. You wrap an arm around the struggling swimmer, and as and he has the wherewithal not to struggle against you as you swim him towards land. You pull yourself onto the rocky shore and help him up behind you. The large, bald woman pulls ahead and reaches the goal first. The crowd roars as she walks onto the far shore, fists raised, raised victoriously. The young swimmer squeezes your arm. Many thanks, Akira positive reputation gain with the Huana. The crowd on the bridge thins and the commotion dies down. Your journey continues. We could have made some money, but we got our reputation gain instead. And also, we did the right thing. <laughs> wow, really? There's nothing here? Silverfin is decent for a sh crew morale, but that's it. Alright, let's get out of here. And we are going south to Port Maje, southwest. So we want to go here. I forget the name of whoever it is, but we'll figure it out. Bellario's Rest, that's where we started the game. Or that's where we... Uh, that's the first place we came to in the Deadfire. How about that? We started the game in Cadnua. And then the in-between... And then we woke up here. Shipwreck. What do we got? Hawana colors, flint and tinder, fire kelp. That's it. Asilia the wave skipper, or Asilla the wave skipper. What she got? 60 crew. We, you know what? We are good. We can beat her. We need to get to 400. Doing it by 20 each. Half sail? No. Just full speed ahead. We need to get to under 400. Or to about 400. Seems like when the wind's at our back, we get double movement speed. Okay. Starting to turn to port. Then hold position. Why are we not... Did it take us two turns to turn to port? Must have. Alright, hold position. I wonder if that counts for the next round, though. It might not. Oh, wow. Really? Why are we... We're not moving, though. And what's raking fire? Let's hold position one more time. They are really close. How did they... How did they cover 300 freaking meters? We were at 400, were we not? Whatever. Fire. Nice. 
We did 11 damage. Wow, he's really fast. Yeah, they're closing at 65 per uh, whatever. Brace for impact. Alright. Uh, hold position, because we'll have two ready next time. Or six damn meters. Fire the starboard cannons. They're too close. We got terrible accuracy at this uh, range. Whatever. Fine. Fine. They must have known we had the better chance at winning at sea, so they charged us. I wonder when we fight. I wonder when we fight that big octopus thing at, on the loading screen. Don't let the bastards get close. You're the one who freaking rammed me. I dare I want you to charge whoever gets close. Everybody else, get back. Bear, you come up front. Seraphin, you get Asilla. Bear, get up here. Oh my god, fine. Attack. I'm gonna have my guy take out all the easy ones. Let's have, uh... Let's have Aloth. And you know what? No. I'm gonna have him put these guys to sleep. Otherwise... What's-her-face is gonna go down. Where am I? I don't want Shoddy to die, so I need to put these guys to sleep or kill them. Just don't do anything. There you go. Get out. Adair, are you still up here? I want you to charge. Who? Charge Asilla. And these guys are pretty low damage, or pretty low level. Good job. Morale gained 10, nice. Lots of people gained levels and ranks. Share coins with crew. Take all and continue. All right, that is who we needed to find down here. So we can now go to Crookspur Island. We're about halfway through our level again. Do I want to keep going down? The Ready Rebel? Temple of Tangaloa Ruins, Imposter's Lament. You know what, let's just do this one, whatever this is, the Kangati Islands. Amira's Whisper. Let's do this and then one the episode. A light fog curls about your ankles, breathless, whispering voices call to you from the darkness. They cry in half-uttered sentences and moans, gurgles, screams. What few words you can make out among the chorus beg for mercy for an end to their pain. Step into the fog. Wisps wind around your torso and cling to your skin. The cries become shouts and the chorus screams. The fog thickens until you see nothing but its swirling ghostly shape. Dark forms appear in the fog. They encircle you one moment and disappear the next. Uh, who's there? Show yourselves. In an instant, the shrieking gale ceases and shapes stutter to a halt. They linger for a moment, flickering uncertainly, then coalesce into a greater darkness and rush towards you. I eh, probably should have had uh, Shodi do her thing with her lantern. That was one of the options, but I didn't want to... I wanted to talk to the people first. See if it's what they actually want. Eh? Ah. Alright, Shadow, Shadow, and Eloise. Eloise. <laughs> Pretty name. You know what? Just consecrated ground. I'm gonna. My guy's gonna be enough to take out these two shadows. They're gonna die quickly. So everyone else go on the specter. Shodi, go ahead and do your thing. It will. It should hurt them. Shadow, go down. We are going to flame Eloise. Flame pillar. Everyone else can just attack. Somebody knocked them all back. Alright, everybody. Take out the specter. 
Spectres explode on death, I think. Yeah, they do. Alright, now, Mark Eloise, because she's a wraith, I imagine she's harder to hit. She's at only 49 deflection, I guess. Not that hard. This would have been a decently hard fight if we came here earlier. But nothing. That was easy. Eloise's locket. Crafted from silver and inlaid with a bloodstone, this necklace bears a short inscription in Endare and identifying the owner, the former first mate of the Impostor's Lament. Within its compartment rests a curled lock of light brown hair. Spiritual essence infuses the pendant, lending both it and its wearer an otherworldly air. The Impostor's Lament is a crashed ship on this island. Ghost Touch, 10 accuracy against spirits and 1 intellect. Nope. 10 accuracy on its own would have been nice, but not just against spirits. Maybe I'll keep it, definitely. Maybe there'll be a dungeon with mostly spirits in it or something. And if I realize that early enough, I'll put that on. But that's where we're going to end it for today. We'll go to the temple next time, the Impostor's Lament, and then maybe Crookspur Island if we don't find anything else interesting on our way. So please leave a like or comment below, and feel free to subscribe for more full Let's Plays like this one. And that's my mama.